Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, ancient meets modern in a Japanese sword fitting. You know, I'm a big fan of mixing traditional arts with more modern techniques and tools to produce hybrid products that mix old and new. In that spirit, today I'm going to show the making of a Damascus steel sword guard for a Japanese sword. These guards, known as tsuba in Japanese, are part of the complex set of parts used in the traditional mounting of Japanese swords. Tsuba were typically made from wrought iron, though you also see many examples of soft metal tsuba made from copper alloys like brass, shakudo, and shibuichi. But we're doing something non-traditional here. We'll be forging it from Damascus steel. <laughs> So I'm not going to show the forging process in huge depth, but basically I'm stacking up a bunch of pieces of steel alternating a nickel steel alloy known as 15 and 20 with a simple high carbon steel. The nickel resists etching, which will have results you'll see later. The billet is tack welded together, then forge welded, meaning that it's heated up hot enough that when squashed together, it all sticks together to make one solid chunk of steel. That steel is drawn out and then twisted, which then causes, as you might expect, a twisty pattern to form in the steel. I'll then cut off a small section, upset it a little to thicken it, then use a widening die to flatten it out into a thinner plate. Once I've got enough material to produce the dimensions I'm looking for, a little under three inches across, I'll grind off the scale on my grinder. Then I'll turn to my surface grinder to make it dead flat, reduce it to a uniform thickness, and give it a nice clean surface finish. Now I'll go high tech and mill out the Nakago Ana, that's the little hole that the tang inserts through, using my CNC mill. For years I made these using more traditional methods, either by drilling out a bunch of holes, sawing out the webbing between the holes, sneaking a tiny little file in there, then a big file, finally enlarging it to the correct shape, or by drilling a hole, then sawing out the rough hole using a tiny jeweler's saw blade, and most of the time they'd break and you'd run through three or four of them before the hole was done, then filing it to final size with a combination of mill files and hobby files. Either way, this was a huge pain in the neck requiring very little skill, but lots of patience, and most importantly, lots of time. CNC eliminates this enormous waste of time and energy so that I can focus on the more interesting parts of this piece. Next, I'll return to the exact methods used in Japan for hundreds of years, marking out the shape of the tsuba using a can lid. More grinding. And we've got our shape. After more cleanup grinding and some hand sanding, we're ready to etch the Damascus. It goes into the etchant as this completely faceless blank. And comes out looking like this. As we mentioned, the etchant eats away at the carbon steel much more aggressively than the nickel steel, leaving a striking two-tone pattern. After carefully cleaning off the residual oxides produced by the etching process, it's ready to go into a hot salt solution to create a patina. Depending on the heat of the salts, the composition of the steel, and the amount of time the piece spends in the bluing salts, 
any number of different colors from gold to purple to blue to silver can be produced. The client for this job has already made a saya or scabbard which is purple color, so I'll be aiming to produce a color which will harmonize with it. This process is known as niter bluing because the salts used are not your standard table salt, they're nitrates and nitrites. So, after cleaning and a spritz of WD-40, here's the result. As you can see, one of the interesting aspects of this coloring process is that the patina has an iridescent quality, looking almost blue and white from one angle, then gold and purple from another. Paired with these two other fittings, known as a Fuchi and a Kashira, the Tsuba is now ready to be fitted to the sword. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon.